handling and restraint of boa constrictors in order to successfully conduct a safe physical examination, otherwise known as how not to be your next, your patient's next meal. <laughs> Alrighty, so here today I've got my volunteer, Anya. She is a five-year-old boa constrictor. Um, I'm going to be using her in a demonstration showing how to properly handle a snake so that you don't get bitten during the exam or you don't stress them out and how to look at them from head to toe in order to assess their health. Alrighty, so when most snakes come to the veterinarian, they usually arrive either in a storage container or a pillowcase. <laughs> it's low stress for the snake. It allows them to move freely and conform to their carrier. As you can see, Miss Anya is trying to escape hers right now. Mm -hmm. um, I'll start by showing how to remove them from the carrier that they're in and continue looking at her down. So I'm going to pop the top up. Um, one thing you don't want to do is just reach in and grab a snake. Uh, that can scare them. They might jump back. They might want to bite you. So what you ideally would like to do is shield their head and then find another object, preferably a tongue. Snakegetters.com recommends using a tongue in order to support the other portion of their body while you grab behind their head. So that is what I'm going to do today. gently right behind their head. In a situation where a snake has coiled around an object or your arm, you want to start unwrapping them by their tail. It's not that she's trying to constrict, she's just trying to grip onto objects. For a, thing, for a snake's physical examination, you start by examining their head and moving backwards. Obstructing the bottom of the sheet where the tongue is coming out from. The teeth should have nothing in them, such as bedding, gritty hair. See all a nice little smile. <laughs> Alright, so based on this on this oral examination, she does seem to be normal and healthy there. Uh, the eyes, you want to make sure they are clear. to make sure they're not sunken in. Also examine for any parasites such as mites. Again, use the light for what you see. The mites would be either usually little black specks and the snake which has lots of black specks that might be difficult to discern which is a mite and which isn't. If you have that kind of difficulty, you can turn them over on their backs and examine their lighter colored belly. Any of those black flags, which again, this on does not have any. <laughs> so she doesn't have any stuff parasites. This snake's body is one big long muscle. So again, she's. Right. At the toe, examining the skin, making sure that there's not any hold 
fluid skin. She's nice and hydrated. On a physical examination of a snake. Typically what you would do for those small animals is of course check the heart, lungs, heart rate, respiration, etc. When a snake comes to an animal hospital, those aren't usually accurate readings because temperature, excitement, a crowd, or stress level can make those scary. But one useful tool is you would still like to listen to the heart to make sure that it's free of any. normal and it doesn't have any obstructions, lung sound good, clear, one useful tool that the University of Illinois has found is that you can take a wet gauze and place it at the end of your stethoscope and onto the snake's body and it'll help you hear it a little bit better and also to funnel out some of the sounds that are coming from them flickering their tongue or offensive hiss might create. So that is what I'm going to do. Generally you can find a snake's heart a fourth to a third of the way along the body. Moving on to the lower half of her body, you will find the cloaca, which is the area that they produce feces, urine from. So they get fun on their tail. It's also how you would sex a snake. Uh, in an older boy, what you would do is take a probe and insert it into the cloaca. If it goes down anywhere from two to six scale lengths, it's a female. If it goes longer than six scale lengths, it's a male. Um, in younger snakes, you can pop the genitalia out by gently rubbing it, and those would expose themselves. So, let's relief with that. You want to make sure it's clear again of debris, any feces around it, or any retained shed would indicate that the snake either has parasites or is unhealthy in some way and is slightly dehydrated, none of which are present. So. Ms. Anya seems to check out overall on her physical examination. Um, if you use these tools, hopefully you will be able to safely conduct a physical exam on a snake without being bitten or scaring the snake or causing stress to them during their exam. All right, thank you all so much for listening, and if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer those now.